Indeterminate or vine tomatoes are some of the biggest producers you can grow. Infinite growth coupled with an even bigger harvest. Vine tomatoes can be impressive in any backyard garden, but you really have to set them up right initially to get the most out of their potential. So let's get started. Our first goal in planting vine tomatoes is to obtain the right plants. In the spring, indeterminate starter tomato plants are available everywhere. This is the easiest way to get started, and if you plan to buy your starter plants, you can skip ahead to part two. However, if you'd like to make your own starter plants, either to have access to more and better varieties, or simply because of economies of scale, well, you can do that as well. Begin with a quality organic potting or seeding mixture. It should be light, airy, and not prone to compaction. A proper seeding mix is absolutely essential for getting high germination rates. Fill your seedling or plug tray right to the top with this mixture. Compress each cell down about 25% and then fill them up and level them off again. Before seeding though, let's water those trays from below with about 2 liters of warm water and let them sit for around 2 hours. When seeding, there are two common methods for seed spacing in the cells. The single method sees one seed placed in the center. Here, however, we use the multiple seeding method to save on time, space, and money. We place anywhere from 8 to 15 seeds randomly in each cell. Then to plant, we simply cover it with the light dusting of that same potting mix. Tomato seeds take about 7 to 10 days to germinate at 85 degrees Fahrenheit. For tomatoes destined for the garden, we actually leave them in the plug trays for a little bit longer than normal. So we have about two months until we need to prepare the larger pot trays for this transition. For these trays, I use the standard four inch flexible nursery pots. They fit 18 to a tray and can easily house the tomato starts until they're large enough for their final transition. Fill the four inch pots level with that same potting or container mixture that we used earlier and then compress them down about 25%, just like we did with the cell trays. Fill them level again, and then let's do that soaking again for about two hours with two liters of warm water. Now, using the handle end of your favorite screwdriver, make a decent sized hole right in the center of each pot. Then with the other end of that same screwdriver, let's pry out one of those plugs without pulling on the actual tomato stems themselves. Remove any small or runty seedlings, leaving behind only the best of the best. Gently pull apart your tomato seedlings. Pull them from the soil or the root mass itself and not the actual stems of the plants. Try to keep an even number of roots and soil mass per tomato seedling. Next, place your seedlings in the holes that we pre-made, planting them as deep as possible. Tomatoes are the kings of transplanting, and this is due to their ability to send out adventitious roots from anywhere along their stems. It is important to use this to our advantage at this very young stage and to advance these plants as fast as possible. About five weeks after germination, our tomato plants are already huge, over a foot tall and ready for action. Another two weeks after that, however, the plants are topping two feet tall and pressing up against my greenhouse roof. It's pretty amazing as these guys are still in the original four inch nursery pots. At this size, it's now time for planting. And whether you've bought your vine tomatoes from the store or you made your own at home like we did here over the last eight weeks, the next step can be done in two different ways. For the first method, 
dig a hole as deep as at least one half the height of your tomato starter plant. Fine tomatoes, while they may seem long and skinny, will actually compete heavily for light as their canopies fill out. Not only that, their roots extend way further than their thin bases would lead you to believe. So try to space these guys out at at least 18 to 24 inches apart. Let's water those newly dug holes before planting to ease the risk of transplant shock for those young roots. For our first example, we're going to use an indeterminate standby, Brandywine. Taking your tomato starter in one hand, flip it over and massage that pot to allow that plant to pop out on its own. Don't tug on the stem, even when the plants are this size. As vine tomatoes grow, you'll find that the bottom leaf nodes often turn yellow and even begin to die off. This is normal, and you can simply pop them off without any tools. This is great because it actually leaves us with more stem to bury and more stem where adventitious roots can take hold. Place the plant into the hole that we dug earlier, again, as deep as possible. Holding the stem as vertical as you can, begin filling in and around that base with a quality organic potting mix. Again, bury that stem as deep as possible. Every section of stem that's under the soil surface will result in that many more roots being formed. So, let's try this again with a more bushy variety. As before, massage that plant out of the pot rather than yanking on the stem. This particular variety, an heirloom slicer known as Earliana, is ready to go with no bottom leaves to remove. Method number one is easy, fast, and fairly straightforward. Spacing is easy to calculate, and the plants always seem to respond well. But there's another way to plant vine tomatoes. A method that can result in even larger root systems and faster crop development. So let's check it out. Begin by laying down a layer of potting mix, roughly three quarters of the length of your plant. Next, water that strip of soil good and thoroughly. We want that section of soil to be as moist as possible and primed to grow tomato roots. For this example, we're going to use a vine heirloom cherry tomato known as Sweetie. Remove as many bottom leaf nodes as possible. This method works best for plants that are large, long, and even overgrown. Same as before, gently massage off that pot, revealing the plant inside. Now, instead of planting the vine in a deep vertical hole, simply lay that tomato start down horizontally along the soil surface, right where we put that potting mix. For the really long plants, I like to tie off that shoot end first. Vine tomatoes require a vertical wire, trellis, or staking system of about six feet or higher. Try to have this system in place before planting. It makes it about a hundred times easier. With our vine now tied off and secured, let's make a small depression for that root ball to sit in. With the root ball in place, and as much of that stem lying flat right on top of the soil surface as possible, we can now begin to add more potting mix. Your goal here is to bury the roots and the stem with as much soil as possible. Whichever method you choose, this next step is the same for both. Your first instinct is to always going to be to water those newly planted beds, but Let's get a layer of mulch on first. Today, I'm using a layer of coarse straw. You can use grass clippings, shredded leaves, really whatever you have on hand. Lay that mulch on thick and don't skip or skimp 
this step. Mulching helps to eliminate moisture loss as well as to moderate extreme temperatures. And of immediate benefit to us right now, it allows us to top water without blasting our new potting soil everywhere. Give the beds a good soaking. The soaking to end all soakings. Pro tip of the day, tomatoes grow much better with infrequent but heavy waterings than they do with frequent smaller ones. Hey, before we wrap up here, let's have one more look at method two to ensure that we have the strategy down. Lay a landing pad of potting mix, wet it, and prepare the vine tomato for planting. Lay that vine down flat with as much of the stem touching the soil as possible. Secure the top of the vine to your trellis before potting and then continue potting the rest of the plant. Lay the mulch on thick and good and then give your plants the soaking of a lifetime. If you have the space and the vertical infrastructure, you'd be hard pressed to find a bigger producer than indeterminate tomatoes. Plant them as deep as you can, or better yet, on their sides to maximize their foothold in the soil. This one strategy alone can increase their yields by 20 to 30%. You gotta think of these guys like an iceberg. With that foliage that you see on the top, just scratching the surface of the total plant size. It may seem weird to bury three quarters of the plant that you've babied since a seedling, but once you see the result in the growth of your vines, you're gonna wonder why you didn't do it sooner. Hey, thanks for watching guys. If you're getting value in this and the other series that I'm doing on YouTube, hit those like, share, and subscribe buttons if you'd be so kind and I'll see you in the next video.